Hey, differential equation students. Uh, we're talking today about step functions, and in particular, how to model formulas that look like this, where we've got different values for different values of t, using heavy side step functions. Now, to start with, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to plot heavy side step functions. So this is what our book calls the u functions. This is u sub 0. This is the function that's equal to 0 until you hit 0, and then it's equal to 1. So it's like a switch that's turned on. And just to kind of emphasize the fact you don't see any red down here, let's put a plus 1 here. And you can see there we are at height 1. There's the graph. And then after we hit 0, this switch turns on. The switch is from 0 to 1, and now we have height 2. Now, there are a couple of different things that you can do here. You can take a heavy side function and multiply by a number out in front. So now we are 0 until we hit an input of 0, and then our switch turns on at height 2. What we're going to be using a lot in Maple is we're going to be talking about move, shifting this graph over. Oops. Don't know. Oh. Sorry, it was outside the range. Let me turn this on to 4. So here we have a heavy side function that is 0 all the way up to 3, and then it switches on. So in the book, they refer to this as u sub 3 of t. Now what we're going to do is we're going to use some heavy side functions to create this function right here. So we start off at 3, then negative 2, etc. The best way to handle something like this is to move from your low numbers to your high numbers. So let me show you what we're going to do here. First, we're going to go three times the heavy side of t. Let's plot this between, let's say, negative 1 and positive 6. Okay, this is great. Notice that at 0, our switch turns on, and we're at height 3. But we have a problem in that at 2, we're supposed to dip down to negative 2. So if I'm cruising along here at height 3, and then all of a sudden I want to zoom down to negative 2, I need to move down 5. So the way we handle this is we go minus 5 times a switch that will turn on at time 2. So there's the heavy side of t minus 2. And now you see we've got 3 up until input 2, and then we go down to negative 2, just like we want it. All right. But, of course, at 3, we want to pop back up to 2. So at 3, we want to pop up to height 2. Well, if I'm zooming along here at height negative 2, and I want to get up to height 2, I've got to move up 4. So we're going to have plus 4 times the heavy side, and I want this switch to turn on at time 3, so that's t minus 3. So now I've got 3 up until time 2, negative 2 up until time 3, and then I've got 2. The last thing I need to do is I need to make sure that at time 5, I get up to 7. I'm at height 2 right now, so I'm going to have to add 5 to that. So plus 5 times heavy side, and this switch I want to turn on at time 5. And there we have how to model this piecewise defined function using heavy side functions. Please note that Maple puts in these vertical lines. These aren't actually part of the graph, technically. Um, it's just that Maple fills in wherever possible. All right. So we'll be doing this because eventually what we want to do is we want to think of this as a force acting on our springs. And so we want to model different forces at different times. And heavy side functions allow us to do that.